open up a truck and see stacks of bodies in there. Um, none of us come to work imagining that. Trapped in a semi trailer in the searing South Texas heat, a deadly discovery made on San Antonio's southwest side. Dozens of dead bodies found in the back of an 18 wheeler. Several others rushed to hospitals in San Antonio. The story changing within the past hour. The number of people dead continues to rise. San Antonio Fire saying the victims transported to the hospital all had heat related injuries. The story has changed throughout the night. You know, when we started, we heard that 20 people were found dead. But tonight, that number is above 40. So here's what we know so far. 46 people were found dead in the back of a big rig. 16 victims were taken to area hospitals, 12 of them adults, four of them children. This all happening near Quintana Road and Casson Drive, not all that far from where 35 South and Loop 410 cross. Tonight, the city saying this has now become a federal investigation with Homeland Security taking over. The night team's Patty Santos on the scene. Patty, you've been there most of the evening. What can you tell us tonight? Yeah, as authorities reveal that number of 46, there was a sigh of disbelief from community members that have gathered here to hear what is happening here. This has become the largest mass casualty investigation in our city, at least in recent history. Now, first responders arrived to the scene to see stacks of bodies dead inside the semi truck. Homeland Security is now handling this investigation of who's responsible, but we are told three people are in custody. City. Fire investigators say the bodies were hot to the touch. There was no sign of water in the truck or even refrigeration. Everyone was suffering from heat exhaustion. 16 people, including four minors, were transported to a nearby hospitals. They were alert. Fire officials say those people are still alive. They were too weak to be able to get themselves out of the semi truck. The ones that we did transport, uh, we do hope that they're all going to survive. They were again suffering from heat exhaustion, heat stroke, the same things that any of us would get if we're out in the elements. And authorities saying these people would have likely died if they, a nearby business owner had not heard a faint cry for help. And then he came out to see one of the victims outside the truck. At this point, we are waiting for Homeland Security to uh, give us answers as to who's responsible for this, how long these individuals were inside this truck and where they were coming from. We're gonna continue to follow this story and bring you more. We're also gonna tell you who is here helping these individuals that are alive tonight. Coming up later in the newscast, we'll send it back to you. Patty, thank you. You know, there's been so much reaction as a result of this story. We know that Governor Greg Abbott took to Twitter where he blamed the president and his administration. Also, U.S. Representative Joaquin Castro also taking to Twitter, calling the loss of life a tragedy. But he also spoke about the politics surrounding immigration, saying, quote, we must end Title 42, which has put desperate, oppressed people in grave danger of death, end quote. Sad, tragic, shocking, a lot of reaction tonight, including for people who live near where all this happened. The night team's Lee Waldman on the south side of Quintana Road. Yes, there are railroad tracks that run right by there, as we heard in Patty's live shot, and I'm sure we'll hear in Lee's as well. Lee joined us live. Lee, I, I am, cannot imagine neighbors tonight that live just right on the other side of a tree line from the scene. Steve, you said it right there. There's a train passing us on the other side of those train tracks. On the other side of this wooded area is the Hidden Cove Indian Creek neighborhood. We spoke to people who live there. They said they immediately knew something is wrong the second they heard those helicopters flying overhead. I mean, these people come to San Antonio to, you know, to come and work. I mean, they really don't do nothing to nobody. You know, that's my concern. But. How did they bring these people a lease and just leave them there? Shock, disbelief, and sadness. That's very sad that that they had to go like that. You know, they were just they were just looking for a better life, and for them to just lose their life just to try to get over here and just try to make a better life for them and their kids. It is. It's something sad because they're trying to come over here for a better living, and they wind up dead. 
People living near Quintana Road, where dozens of people were found dead in an 18-wheeler, are struggling to grasp why this happened. Loretta Escalante and Omar Rivera both knew something was happening when they heard the helicopters overhead. We were eating right now, and I heard it. I'm like, something's going on. What's happening? But I didn't thought it was behind there. You know, imagine, I mean... Does it feel strange that it's this close? Yes, because that's too close. Imagine in a, what did they have them, like in a trailer? In a 18-wheeler. Oh, wow. We're from the valley, and this is something that, that is common. This is something like crossing people and seeing people cross, trying to, trying to just find a better life. Like, that's, that's something common that I've seen. Now, as you imagine, each of those people that we spoke with said they're just shocked at the sheer number of deaths involved in this. They said their thoughts and prayers are with every person that was taken to the hospital. They're praying that that death toll doesn't rise and our prayers are also with them. Live on the southwest side, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. First responders said the victims had heat related injuries after they were found in the back of that 18 wheeler. So now we're going to bring in meteorologist Adam Kasky. Adam, so again, you know, we don't know how long those people were inside of that big rig, but we do know it was hot today, very hot. In fact, we got up to the triple digits. Yeah, we did. Uh, right around 2 p.m., we hit 101 degrees for the high temperature. Now, thereafter, the temperature actually fell off quick, pretty abruptly and quickly because of the storms off to the north, pushing an outflow boundary through, and then some areas of rain. But we did make it to 101 with a lot of sunshine beating down on that truck earlier today. Now, we only have this kind of data for passenger vehicles, but even at 90 degrees, outside after 30 minutes inside your typical vehicle it could get up to 104 after 60 minutes the interior temperature would be about 133 degrees that's just with 90 degrees outside and some sunshine in your typical passenger vehicle by the way we do have areas of rain we're going to take a closer look at these and how much rain fell and where and if you didn't see it today you do have another opportunity i'm going to time out your best odds coming up in just a bit Adam, thank you. Of course, this is a story that we're going to continue to watch on the KSAT social media page is also on KSAT.com. Dozens of people found dead in a big rig tonight. We're asking who those people are, how all of this happened. You can get updates on your phone. It's easy. Just download the KSAT app. And of course, we'll have more on this story a little bit later in this newscast. We've got another developing story, though, tonight I want to tell you about. There's another legal battle over abortion in Texas. We're still weeks away from the state's trigger law taking effect. So why are clinics stopping abortion care right now? We know that one clinic serving San Antonio argues that it's because of confusion by the state's lead attorney. Alamo Women's Reproductive Services is one of several plaintiffs in a lawsuit that was filed today. And in that lawsuit, they claim the attorney general advised prosecutors that they could already start holding clinics criminally liable on a Texas abortion law that predates Roe. Now, plaintiffs argue that women who are less than six weeks pregnant should be allowed to get an abortion until that trigger law takes effect. And there's another issue. When does that trigger law take effect? The American Civil Liberties Union says it's scheduled to take effect 30 days after the Supreme Court issues its judgment. They argue an opinion was issued on Friday and its judgment would happen at least 25 days later. Once that happens, abortion procedures would be limited. A pregnant woman would need to be facing a medical emergency. And that literally has to be a life-threatening condition to the woman. Um, and has to make a notation of that in the file and follow a certain number of certification uh, mandates that appear in the Texas abortion law. That's Texas A&M professor Emerita Lynn Rambo, and she says that does not include the fetus's life being threatened. Professor Rambo says doctors and providers will face enormous risks if their medical decisions are civilly or criminally challenged. Now, the White House has said that women can travel to other states for whatever reason, and that includes an abortion. Since Roe versus Wade was overturned, there are concerns as to what else could be impacted. Fertility specialists across the country are now discussing the future of their own treatment. And fertility specialist Dr. Randall Robinson at UT Health San Antonio and University Health has been listening in on those discussions. He especially wanted to know what would happen if this ruling prompted other laws that define life as beginning at conception. 
Is that something you're concerned about um, when it comes to freezing embryos and eggs? I mean, I'm personally concerned about that. If additional legislation would be passed, that would make it um, a lot more difficult to provide that family building that we want to provide for our patients. So here's the thing. Current laws don't mention embryo status or so-called personhood definitions. So Robinson, the doctor who you just heard from, is just continuing his care as usual. Other states are facing their own legal battles when it comes to abortion. Judges temporarily blocked abortion bans in Louisiana and Utah. Meanwhile, a federal court in South Carolina says an abortion law restricting the procedure will take effect immediately. The decision bans abortion beginning around six weeks of pregnancy. And the state of California plans to take abortion rights to voters in November. They want voters to decide if those rights will be in California's constitution. If you're just joining us, more than 40 people found dead in a tractor trailer tonight. This is all part of a federal investigation, and we continue to follow that breaking news story coming from the city's southwest side. We're going to check in with our Patty Santos. She has a live update for you next on The Night Beat. Hey, welcome back. We continue to follow that breaking news surrounding dozens of deaths in a human smuggling investigation. 46 people were killed. You know that more than a dozen others were taken to the hospital, and that includes children. All of this taking place on the city's southwest side. It's on Quintana Road near Quezon Drive. We know a call came in just before 6 p.m. tonight, and since then, We've been following this story. The night team's Patty Santos has been on the scene since that. Now, Patty, Catholic Charities is also or was also on the scene. What can you tell us about their response and what they're doing there? Well, as you can imagine, when you're talking about a mass casualty of 46 individuals, 46 people, this takes a toll on, on the human soul. We could actually tell you that some of those uh, individuals that are here to help are also the uh, local priests with the archdiocese. But we know that right now federal authorities are going to be looking for who's responsible for this. But we know that Catholic Charities is also here to help provide some kind of uh, relief to the families. Uh, that are still alive to those individuals that are still alive, but also maybe even possibly reach out to the individuals that are uh, in their countries where these people are coming from. Take a listen. It makes you wonder, why am I leaving my country to do this? Why am I leaving to go to America and work? You know, it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah, and one of the messages that authorities here uh, provided to those individuals is, you know, this this is a very, um, it can be a, a life and death situation if you decide to leave your country to, to come to the United States for this. And unfortunately, this is one of those examples. We're going to continue to stay on the scene here and bring more information of how you possibly could help uh, with this investigation. We'll send it back to you. Patty, thank you. Just a really sad story. And there's so many of you talking about it on social media. We're following the story online on the air and you can stay up to date on our social media pages. Also on KSAT.com. Naturally, a lot of people have reacted to the story. That includes Texas Governor Greg Abbott, lawmakers, also San Antonio's Archbishop. As we continue to update the story, we just want to remind you that we can you can get updates sent straight to your phone. Super easy. All you have to do is download the KSAT app, a great tool to have. And of course, this is a story we'll continue to follow, but uh, the weather certainly playing a factor in all of this. It was just so hot today, and I think a lot of us, I, I'd kind of forgotten just how triple digit hot it was today, earlier in the day before the, the you know, the rain started. And not just that, but also the bright sunshine, you know, beating down on the truck, and that makes a big difference as well. I do have a little bit of good news for us, at least weather-wise. Take a look at this photo from our KSAC Connect app, and this is in the Bernie area, actually, Fair Oaks Ranch, one and a half inches. We need some good news, so we, I'm glad to see this. Yes, we do need some good news, and we're all happy to see at least some rainfall. I mean, three quarters of an inch in Trinity Falls, that's far north is San Antonio, basically northern Bear County. And if you didn't get the rain, you may have had this view. 
from off in the distance, a nice rain shaft, heavy downpours. And if you didn't get the rain today, there is another opportunity as we go into tomorrow. Even some ongoing showers right now, but actual measured rainfall today. Hallettsville nearly an inch. Luling 1.24, only a trace at San Antonio International. Lost Maples about a quarter of an inch. Rock Springs nearly three quarters of an inch. So there were, of course, some pockets of good soaking rain. Canyon Lake had eight tenths of an inch of rain right on the lake and especially on the southern shoreline. Radar estimates were even just over an inch. So you look at the activity out there right now and most of it is far west and southwest of San Antonio. This is along the weak frontal boundary that has dropped in. Not a whole lot of action, but at least there is some still ongoing into the evening hour. Switching radar sites, we get a better view of this action just west of Lakey, west of Concan, really not much out here, but some ranches and agricultural areas. But again, some ongoing showers right along that front. A little bit of lightning and thunder. These white lines indicate the cloud to ground lightning strikes, and this is uh, right near Batesville. This action's fairly brief and short lived, but it's better than nothing. Not exactly a big drought buster or even a big dent in the drought. We're going to need a lot more, but it's still some good news and a glimmer of hope on this day and some light rain ongoing farther to the south and east down I-37 and uh, particularly near Choke Canyon Reservoir, some ongoing areas of rain. But that's it. It has come to an end for San Antonio. You go farther to the north. Uh, we're talking Edwards Plateau, some ongoing rain, but that's pretty much it. A really quick look at our radar estimates and you look at the radar estimates over the past 12 hours and you see really where we had the pockets of heaviest rain yellow. So that's two inches and more just north and along I-10 between here and Houston. So I want to talk about tomorrow. Uh, these storms that we have out there tonight will be coming to an end in a few hours. Tomorrow will start the day partly cloudy. By the afternoon, around 2 or 3 p.m., we'll probably see some storms starting to develop, and it's going to be luck of the draw again tomorrow. It's just absolute luck where we'll see the downpours pop up, who's going to get them and who's not. Some of it just comes down to outflow boundaries that get kicked out from these storms like today, which then generate other showers and storms. So about 40% coverage across our area tomorrow, then down to 30% on Wednesday. All right, here's a quick look at that setup. Of course, the radar throughout the day today. There's the boundary now down to the south and west of San Antonio. We also have this little area of highly unorganized thunderstorms, slight chance of development development into a tropical system over the next few days, mostly just going to bring some rain to the Texas Gulf Coast. 73 in the morning by noon. We're up to 90 degrees, 93 the high temperature. That's going to be around 3 p.m. tomorrow. And look at that below 100 all the way through Saturday. So it looked like a big donut of rain. <laughs> and San Antonio was the donut <laughs> hole today. So luck. I'm hoping that over the next few days that fills in. It was just luck today. Yeah, bad luck yeah. for us. All right, thank you. So we know the NFL decided on a punishment for Deshaun uh, Watson. Will soon. Uh huh. Okay. Will soon. But, and and uh, his former team is. Uh, well, the, it's going to be fallout. I mean, you look at the Houston Texans are now being sued by the same person who sued Deshaun Watson in those civil lawsuits. When we come back, now the Texans are the object of the Houston attorney Tony Busby and first impressions for our number one draft picks coming up. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans are being sued for enabling their former quarterback Deshaun Watson during massages where he was been accused of sexual assault and misconduct in 24 civil lawsuits. Houston attorney Tony Busby filed what many believe will be the first of many lawsuits against the NFL franchise after he's already settled 20 of the 24 civil lawsuits against the now Cleveland Browns quarterback for his behavior. Today's lawsuit follows a New York Times report which says the Texans provided Watson with access to the Houstonian which is an exclusive resort resort and spa where some of the massages took place and provide their then quarterback with non-disclosure agreements as early as 2020 despite the fact the team had claimed earlier that the first knowledge of any possible problems came after the first lawsuit was filed against Watson. Here's a statement from Busby and it reads in part today we filed the first case that will likely be many against the Houston Texans related to Deshaun Watson's behavior. Suffice to say the overwhelming evidence collected indicating that the Houston Texans enabled Watson's behavior is incredibly damning. We believe the Texans knew or most certainly should 
should have known of Watson's conduct. Beyond that, we believe the filing speaks for itself. That just starts the week off for Deshaun Watson, who is scheduled to begin his hearing for possible NFL punishment for his behavior during massages tomorrow. The hearing before the NFL and Players Association jointly appointed disciplinary officer Sue L. Robinson, who will listen to arguments beginning on Tuesday as the NFL is fully expected to push for what has been reported as an indefinite suspension of the now Cleveland Browns quarterback that would include missing all of next season, if not more. After the ruling is handed down, ESPN is reporting that Watson will have the option to appeal and the NFL commissioner Roger Goodell would weigh in. Despite the accusations in civil court, the Browns traded six draft picks to the Texans to obtain Watson, who then they signed to a fully guaranteed $230 million contract, but that contract only pays Watson $1 million for the 2022 season. All three of the Spurs' first-round draft picks were introduced here in San Antonio over the weekend. Number one draft pick, ninth overall, Baylor's Jeremy Sohan made the trip along with his family, including his mom and Netu, who played basketball at Oklahoma Pandal State University before the family moved to England. They got to see Jeremy's new home, the AT&T Center, together. Along with number 20th overall pick and the so-called steal of the draft, Ohio State's wingman, Malachi Branham, who, like Jeremy, got a photo opportunity with his family on the court. And the 25th overall pick, Notre Dame's Blake Wesley. As they were being introduced, at a press conference this weekend, all three were asked about their first impressions of San Antonio. It's hot. It's <laughs> crazy hot. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, I feel like it's really cool. Um, I feel like there's a lot of culture, and uh, I feel like we can all, you know, give something to the city. And I can't wait to, to connect with the city and the people of San Antonio. You guys, you guys, a couple Midwest guys, probably. Definitely yeah, so yeah, I was about to say it's it's kind of like good just having nice weather, <laughs> especially in Ohio. It's so bipolar, you don't know if it's gonna rain, <laughs> snow, you know if it's gonna be hot. It's just it's it's nice weather here, so I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> no, for sure it is hot. Uh, I don't really like the heat, but <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm from Midwest, so I like the snow. Good thing it's a little cooler for them today. Now, their job is to bond on the court. They'll start practicing for the Summer League in Las Vegas. That will start on Friday, July 8th at 4 p.m. against Cleveland. And on Thursday, July 14th, 2 p.m. versus Atlanta. And then, of course, the playoffs follow after that. The Stanley Cup already damaged. <laughs> Next. Two months and counting starting today for the first annual KSAT Pigskin Classic featuring three big high school games in the Alamo, Alamo Dome all on Saturday, August the 27th. It all starts at 1130 in the Dome in the morning. Smith Valley and Reagan followed by Judson and Johnson at 330. Then Steele against Brennan at 730. Tickets are only $15 are available right now at all the Las Palapas locations. Congratulations to San Antonio's own Jesse Bam Rodriguez, who successfully defended his WBC Super Flyweight Championship over the weekend against Thailand's Circus at Sor Rung Visai. It was held in the new Techport Arena before a near sellout crowd on Saturday, where Bam Rodriguez made his move in the seventh round, landing a clean overhand left that sent Rung the side to the canvas. That's when Rodriguez let loose, forcing the referee to step in in the eighth to stop the fight, giving Rodriguez the defense of his world title by a technical knockout, making him the youngest world champion in boxing today, just 22 years old. I'm not surprised. I, I knew Rung was side. He was a little flat-footed, so the, the game plan coming in was, you know, move, move my feet. And even Robert, before the fight, he said every, every point you throw is going to land, and that's what happened. So, I mean, I, I'm not surprised, but we executed the game plan perfect, uh, perfect, and we, we came out with the win. All right, didn't take long for the Colorado Avalanche to damage the Stanley Cup trophy. That's when Nicholas... Obe Kubel was skating towards his teammates for a team photo after eliminating what? Tampa Bay Lightning in game six when he tripped. And it was a Stanley Cup that broke his fall, putting a dent in the cup before they even got into the locker room. Oh, well, it's going to do a lot more damage for his back in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Something nice. tells me that they've had to repair the cup a few times. I think it gets repaired every time yeah, it so, goes out. But I mean, something that's, tells me. That's the first time it's happened that fast. Yeah, so. that might be a record for the that, most. That yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. More than just crazy glue. Earliest damage. Hey, we'll be right back after this. A horrific scene playing out on our city's southwest side. Want to get back to that breaking news tonight. 46 people found dead in the back of an 18 wheeler. This is a live picture from Quintana and Casson Drive. We also know 16 people are in the hospital. We've just learned that two of those patients were taken to University Health. A spokesperson from Baptist says five of those patients are in their downtown hospital in critical condition. Good night.